We're at the Autonomous Truck Show in Detroit, and I'm joined right now by Alan Korn. He's the Director of Vehicle Dynamics and Control at Meritor Wabco. And I've got to ask you, what are you talking about here at the conference? <laughs> well, what I'm talking about is the roadmap to automation, to highly automated trucks. So what I did in my presentation, I spoke about some of the history because there's a lot of lessons that can be learned. I tried to describe where we are now, and I tried to describe where we might be in the next five to ten years. I didn't go anything past ten years, because I don't think I'm able to predict. And the example I it's gave... It's changing so fast. Exactly. And if I had been able to predict the effect of the cell phone in 1985, then I'd be more comfortable predicting what's going to happen. <laughs> but I wasn't able to do that, and I'm not able to do it. But I think the theme of my presentation, I think there's a lot of very interesting technologies, safety technologies, efficiency, efficiency technologies that are starting to be released on heavy trucks. And I think what you're going to see is this gradual evolution of technologies being employed. And the key thing on heavy trucks uh, in the trucking industry is return on investment. So they're not going to employ a technology that doesn't pay back because they're a business and they have to make a profit. But having said that, safety pays. Mm -hmm. So when we can offer a technology that can reduce crashes, the trucking industry is very receptive to purchasing that. And again, I can show examples with stability control and um, advanced emergency braking systems. These are not regulated technologies right now, but they're being purchased in very high numbers. Okay, so you've got forward collision warning, you've got uh, electronic stability control. As you automate more of it, specifically, what would Meritor Wabco like to get into? Well, again, we're constantly evolving our, our control systems. So right now, you could almost argue they're somewhat discreet. So you have an ABS system, you have a, a stability control system, you have a collision mitigation system. What's going to happen in the future is they're going to somewhat merge together because you're going to have one central system that's going to have to have the capability of not only controlling the longitudinal direction of the truck, but the lateral direction of the truck. And whether we can get into that space or not, I mean, these are things that we're looking at in the future because I think they open up tremendous opportunities for suppliers and OEMs as well. I gotta believe too, you're looking at consolidating all these technologies into one box, so to speak, to get back to what you were talking about. You gotta have a return on investment. Exactly. I gotta imagine that all kinds of discrete componentry is expensive. Right, I mean, what we have to do is, if we don't find the most efficient way of doing something, then our competitor is going to find the most efficient way of doing it. So we're looking at all types of various integration. The absolute worst thing you can do on a truck is have two devices that do the same thing and more or less then expect the industry to pay for the same thing twice. So what, what we want to try to do is, again, a good example of that would be cellular. You know, right now a lot of heavy trucks are coming out with devices that can do some prognostics for diagnostics and they have a cellular um, um, device on the truck. There are also devices on the truck that maybe do um, logistics. Now you have two cellular devices. Um, it's not efficient. So in the future, that's not going to be tolerated. We're going to have to merge all that together. And I think that's the, that's the role we'll play and other good suppliers as well. You don't want to duplicate technology. Nonetheless, I've got to imagine that you want some sort of redundancy too, especially when you're talking yeah. about safety systems. Yeah. I mean, I gave the example like on today's heavy truck system, we have a pneumatic braking system. And so we have two circuits. We have a primary circuit and a secondary circuit. If you have a leak in one circuit, you have brakes on the other circuit. Mm -hmm. So that's a very simplistic example. When we get out to higher levels of automation, nothing is perfect in life. And we're going to have to deal with the fact that certain things can fail. And if they fail, what is going to happen? What is the redundancy? Because what we have to make sure of is that the vehicle feels in a safe manner. And whether that's going to be, we can use potentially the driver as a redundancy in the beginning, but way out in the future where maybe there's no driver, what will be the redundancy? What is Google looking at now? You're going to have to have a way for that vehicle to pull out of the traffic stream and park itself safely until the issue is corrected. Okay, you don't want to project more than 10 years out. What's the truck going to look like in 10 years? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Wish they'd asked me five years. Yeah. That I'd be much more comfortable with. But what I think will happen in 10 years, I'm very enthusiastic about a technology called platooning. Because what happens in platooning, platooning is when you have trucks driving on the freeway at relatively close following distances, somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 50, 60 feet. The advantage of platooning is it reduces aerodynamic drag. And at highway speeds, aerodynamic drag is the biggest consumer of fuel. So if we can reduce drag, we can reduce fuel. So now if we can come up with a technology like that and do it safely, the return on investment can easily be calculated by the carriers. How long am I going to platoon? 
exactly how much fuel I'm saving and now make a determination on the technology. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing platooning. One could be where the following vehicle is manually steered by a driver. The other way would be someone like a highway pilot where this, the following vehicle is automated, the steering is automated. And potentially, I think within 10 years, you're going to see that. And what I'm very enthusiastic about, now that provides the incentive for automated steering on heavy trucks. Once we have automated steering, all these other technologies that I'm sure you've heard about, traffic jam assist, lane keeping assist, they all become very, very feasible. So we can build off um, the fact that now we have platooning to drive the payback, and now we can develop other technologies to take advantage of that um, technology. Alan Korn, thanks so much for your time today. Very Thank interesting you, where the truck market is going. Always a pleasure talking that. to you. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Stay tuned, we've got even more coming from the floor of the Autonomous Truck Show.